History tends to repeat itself, and when you are LeBron James and you are a part of the Cleveland Cavaliers, and you just hand-delivered them a championship, which you promised to do, it's not all too surprising that there's certain players you want to come back and play on that same team. Keep the core together, if you will. Last year it was Tristan Thompson. You know, LeBron was pretty vocal about it. He was vocal in the media when he was asked about it, and he said very similar words. This year he kind of stepped it up a bit by actually saying he doesn't want to, quote, go through this same shit again. Here's his uh, piece of an interview from Cleveland Cavaliers training camp via Cleveland.com. This took place on the 30th of September, if I'm correct. We're still missing a huge piece of our team, um, so we're not all the way comfortable yet. Um, you know, once that resolved, hopefully soon, uh, we can really get to our what we need to do. Are you staying out of that or being involved in it? What do you mean? JR. Negotiations. What do you mean? Uh, yeah, I mean, but I haven't been part of any of the negotiations um, from the office side or from the agent side. You know, uh, my ties is. I hate coming into another season two years in a row with one of my big guns not here. You know, so for a leader of the team, you know, for me personally, I just hate to deal with this shit again. So that was your headline. LeBron doesn't want to deal with this shit again. Uh, and look, if LeBron didn't win the championship last year, like, and the Cavs didn't win the championship last year, maybe you can start thinking, well, he shouldn't have so much say. However, I believe him to an extent when he says he's not a part of the negotiations. I don't think he's sitting on the phone during his free time yeah. being like, look, I think we should get JR like a $200,000 incentive bonus if he puts on a shirt for 65 of 82 games <laughs> this year. I, I think it's more the fact that by being vocal in the media, he's going to get what he eventually wants. Now, on top of everything else, it's not like uh, uh, Gilbert isn't going to pay the luxury tax anyway. They're going to be over. And he's going to have to pay the money regardless. What I don't understand is, why annoy him? Why make this a distraction for the player that made a promise and kept it? Like I, We've been through this. Does LeBron have too much power before? Probably. When you win the championship for your city, for your team, you now you have rightfully earned said power, considering he's the entire backbone of their winning ways since he came into the league in 2003. Yeah, it outrages people because they don't want to believe that a single player can have that much power. Not mm. all men can hold all no that power. No one man. Could, no one man. No one man should. No one. No man, man should have, have all that, that power. power. Yeah, Kanye Kanye West. Who might Speaking be, of, his, his hands tied at the moment. Yeah, LeBron was at his concert and chilling. he seems to be caught up in other affairs because Kim Kardashian was held at gunpoint. Um, <laughs> but by the way, uh, so LeBron James, getting back to the substance of the clip, mm. it's. I almost feel like we could just push a but we need a soundboard and just to be like push a button and it just reiterates the points like we've got certain points that we like to try and keep uh, reiterating to our audience like we reiterate that uh, we're not just always on Conor McGregor's dick but he deserves what he gets because he draws in money um, that the argument between Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi is getting tiresome so here's our reasoning both of them have individual qualities that are great one mm -hmm. of them just precedes over the other and then LeBron James is a separate specimen in the NBA. Like, mm -hmm. there's no one that, in the league at the moment who could facilitate any sort of agreement he wants in his team the way that LeBron James could. Like Steph Curry goes into the Golden State Warriors and like, you know what, I, I really think that we need Kristaps Porzingis. Hey, and don't be if we don't have Kristaps Porzingis, <laughs> right, then I just don't think that, that we could do great things. And they would be like, well, oh, I see your point. I mean, everyone wants a unicorn, but <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna listen to you as much because we we don't think we really need them. We're controlling this ship. We we're, we're guiding it to where it wants. We've we got a championship. You helped. Great. Thanks for that. But it wasn't like you came in and were like, I'm gonna win a championship here. I'm gonna do what it takes. I'm gonna get everyone together and I'm gonna win this. That's exactly also, what LeBron James did. Look at it from this perspective. Like I, I, I'll continue with the Steph Curry example, but which is maybe not the best example. And I say that because uh, there's other players that if they left their team, they become one of the worst teams in the league. But you take LeBron James off the Cavaliers and replace him with an average level player, they become a very, very mediocre to average level team, uh, possibly not making the playoffs. Hmm. You take Steph Curry off the current Golden State Warriors, and guess what? They're still probably going to the Western Conference Finals, and if not, the championship with Kevin Durant, Kareem, mm. and Ed Thompson alone. Uh, in other cases, yeah, if you took Westbrook off the Thunder just to continue, the, yes, then they probably become one of the worst teams in the Western Conference. However, James Harden off the Rockets. Take James oh. Harden off the Rockets, and they are the worst. I think James <laughs> Harden actually has that much staying power and has the ability to say. The thing is that LeBron is so vocal about it, right? So LeBron, last year... 
you know, it's like, is he taking care of his hashtag fam with Tristan Thompson because he shares similar, like a similar agent or he knows the agent, their agents are friends, and it's all in the same business. Yes, there's definitely incentive that way to make his own agent happy by getting him. But if LeBron feels that Tristan Thompson last year was vital to them winning a championship, if LeBron feels that J.R. Smith going into this year is vital to them winning a championship, don't piss him off. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I don't like to take credit away from Tyron Lue or David. Well, David Blatt was pretty, like, forgettable. Uh, but Tyron Still Lue, might get a ring. Still might get a ring. But I don't want to take credit away from Tyron Lue and him coming in. But it wasn't like Tyron Lue changed a lot of that. And we understand that LeBron is part, in a way, a player coach. Everything runs through him. Yeah. So, yeah, sign J.R. Smith. You're talking about $15 million instead of $12 million. And by the way, with the growing salary cap next year, the year after, and the year after, whatever two or three year deal you give him for $45-ish million, look at it as you're saving yourself from next year when he signs a one-year deal somewhere else and then can just triple that amount of money. It's not triple, but like close to doubling that amount of money. So I just don't understand why you wouldn't sign J.R. Smith. I can pinpoint exactly where in game seven his back-to-back -back threes changed the entire momentum of that game. You can pinpoint his ability to hit threes even though he gets that fluorescent green light sometimes. His defensive ability stepped up in the playoffs. Like, it, it, you don't need to justify why J.R. Smith needs to be there. It's just a matter no. of when LeBron is that is distracted enough to comment on it, you don't want to piss. I mean, we're having it's, to say we're running in loops. Yeah, it's an important point that I can't believe you didn't touch on. It's a three-point shooting league on a team that doesn't that took a lot of threes last year. But Della Vadova, who was actually sinking threes at an alarmingly high rate, uh, percentage-wise, through at least like the first 50 games of the regular season, is gone. That was a guy that could knock down a three-pointer. J.R. Smith is a guy who only can shoot three-pointers. Actually, I don't think he drove to the rim once last season. It's a joke. My God. Uh, J.R. Smith to be able to take threes. Obviously, Kyrie Irving can take threes, but it's not like LeBron's a great three-point shooter. Not like Tristan Thompson. You have Kevin Love, obviously, in there, too, who can hit him. And uh, Iman Shumpert, who I once mentioned, was able to knock down threes. Uh, looking back at his numbers, it was a much different three-point shooter on the Knicks than he is on the Cavs, so I can at least fix that point from a couple weeks ago. Uh, sign J.R. The team likes him. The city loves him. LeBron loves him. The only people that doesn't... The, the only thing that... Doesn't like JR's shirts. shirts JR's shirts like. and JR don't. I want to get the JR shirt. And, and shirt. yeah, unless LeBron James negotiates that he gets a percentage of the JR shirtless shirt sales. Oh, that's fair. That could be that a good way. Because they will sell. Comment okay. below. Is this a stupid conversation? Should they just give JR uh, Smith the money or they would? are the Cavs going to let him walk in, I guess, free agency, contract talks, whatever it would be? He'd get picked up in about a day from probably about five to six teams who would be very interested in a need of uh, a player who can shoot threes. Like, favorite, subscribe to the channel. Goes a long way. At Francis underscore Maxwell on Twitter, at JasonRuby91. Everything else in the description box below. We'll see you next time.